Hi, this is Darren Nakamura with the Mississippi State Chemical Laboratory, and today we're going to be doing some microwave digest training. Now, this uh, is sort of the first step in a lot of our inorganics analyses. We do it for our atomic absorption samples, we do it for our ICP OES samples, we do it for our ICP MS samples, um, and uh, that might be it, but that is a lot of our samples. So to start, we're going to be weighing out our solid samples on the balance, and before we do any weighing of our sample, we actually have to verify our balance. You can see uh, using our standard weights to make sure that our balance is still measuring where it should be. Generally, you want to sort of flank your measurements um, with what you're expecting, so I will be weighing out about one gram in this video, and so I'm using the weights for the, the one gram and the two gram. We have three different digests that we do, um, but they all start basically the same way. Uh, with weighing out sample, the, the main difference is in the masses. So for our atomic absorption samples, we usually weigh out one gram. For our ICP OES samples, we usually weigh out between 0.25 and 0.5 grams. Uh, and for our ICP MS samples, we usually weigh out 0.25 grams, uh, but generally we're weighing somewhere between 0.1 and 1 grams. We need to use our Teflon microwave vessels for this. Um, we actually have two different sets of microwave vessels. The set in the top bin are our regular clean set, and that's the ones that we use for atomic absorption and ICP OES. You can see we've got the caps and the stoppers. And then in the bottom bin there is the extra clean ones. And we'll go over how to clean those in this video briefly. Uh, but basically those have been cleaned and then sent through the microwave another time. So those are extra clean for our ICP MS samples. Uh, once again using one of these tubes and a cap and a stopper. For some samples that are sticky, viscous, or otherwise difficult, we may want to weigh directly into the tube um, we do this often for our ICPMS samples when we're testing food items, jams, jellies, meats. Um, the point of this is that a lot of the time with the weigh boats, we can weigh accurately into the weigh boats, but then we can't transfer easily from the weigh boats into the tubes. So we use the balance in G025 for this one because it can support the weight of the tube itself where the analytical balance in GO21 um, actually it won't hold the, the tube on its own. So this is the point where our three digests differentiate each other. In our acid hood we have going from left to right our trace metal grade nitric acid our regular grade nitric acid, hydrochloric acid, and sulfuric acid. We won't be using the sulfuric acid today, but so our standard digest is 10 milliliters of our trace metal grade nitric acid. You can see I forgot to actually put the sample in <laughs> this time. I was about to put the acid in before the sample, but so sample goes in from our weigh boat, tapping to make sure that the I can get as much of the solid in, and then now I rinse down 
the weigh boat with five milliliters of the nitric acid to make sure I got as much of a sample out of the weigh boat and into the tube. And then to that I add another five milliliters of our nitric acid. So that's the standard one. We have a harsher digest that we use um, generally only for the OES and only when we are looking for specific elements. The ones that come to mind are calcium and iron, but basically anytime you run a sample and you find your QC is low, it could be because the digest wasn't uh, powerful enough. So this digest is seven and a half milliliters of nitric acid and two and a half milliliters of hydrochloric. So you can see I did the same thing where I rinsed the boat with five milliliters of nitric, but then I added one squirt of the nitric and then one squirt of the hydrochloric. For our third digest, we do five milliliters of nitric acid and then two milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. This is an oxidizing digest, and so it um, is a little bit more powerful, but not quite as harsh on our tubing when we get to the analysis stage. Uh, this one I weighed directly into the tube, and so I didn't have to wash any boat into it. You can see I've got now two milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide solution, and that just gets added directly into the tube. After adding the acid, the next thing to do is to cap the microwave vessels. You can see we put the stopper down in, screw the cap on, we're going to do that for all three of these, and then once the cap is on, we take the little tool that comes with the microwave and put it on the cap and twist until you hear two clicks. So you'll hear that right now. Then you can put the tube into the carousel in its designated spot. Once we have the vessels tightened and in the carousel, we can now add the carousel into the microwave. You can see uh, it goes in with the number 1 and the number 17 facing the front, and it shouldn't move much if you try to spin it. So typically, all you'd have to do is touch start, but if you ever get out of the method that we normally use, you can go to one-touch methods, choose the AOAC fertilizer method, method, and then hit start. It should detect the vessels that are in there, and eventually start the microwave digest. Make sure to record in the microwave logbook what you're digesting so that we have a record of the digest. Once the samples in the microwave have finished their digest and given enough time to cool, we can take them out and take them to the hood. Now we want to open these pointing away from ourselves and into the hood because they will release some noxious gas that we don't want going toward our faces. Once you have the cap off, we want to get a deionized water squirt bottle and squirt the bottom of the stopper into the vessel to make sure anything that's on the stopper gets into the vessel. And then it's time to carefully pour from the digest vessel into our volumetric flask. For 
a 50 mil vol volumetric flask like I'm using here. The necks are pretty thin, so you have to pour pretty slowly, or else you run out. You run the risk of spilling. Once you've poured as much as you can into the vessel, we want to rinse uh, the inside walls of the vessel and do it again at least twice, maybe three times, just making sure that you don't go over the, the total volume of the volumetric flask that you're pouring into. For our ICPMS samples, we generally want to work in plastic because the glassware can sometimes leach elements that our ICPMS picks up. So the pour is actually easier. Same process of rinsing down the stopper into the vessel, but then pouring into a wide mouth 50 milliliter plastic centrifuge tube is quicker and easier than a narrow-necked or, or, um, volumetric flask. Now that we have these samples poured up into their respective containers, uh, it's time to bring them up to volume. We just use deionized water for this. Uh, we have a carboy that lets, lets us do this pretty accurately, so the same rule applies as always does with volumetric flasks. Make sure you bring the water up to the line such that the bottom of the meniscus hits the line. And that rule applies also to the plastic centrifuge tube, but it's not quite as accurate. Thanks for watching Microwave Digest Training.